several things as I've as I've processed this. Uh, here's here's the things that just my way of making sense out of this. One is that um, we find ourselves thrown in this existence the way it is. It's what Heidegger called our thrownness, and um, we we have to deal with what uh, deal with it as we find it. I don't get to set the rules. I have to just deal with it as it is. So, I guess my first word is this: that rather than complaining that it's not clear, I just have to, with all the honesty and integrity I can muster up, to search for truth. That's all I can do. Uh, there's no there's no other option. And so, uh, that's my first point. Now, on top of that, I would add that there is what I sometimes call the fog of war, uh, where it's the world that God created. Well, the world that we're in now is not the world God created. Uh, the world we're in now is one in which, uh, according to the Bible, uh, myriads of uh, angelic beings have fallen, rebelled against God, and now exercise a sort of cloudy influence in this world, a polluting influence in this world. Um, and it's one where human beings have been co-opted in this rebellion. And so our own nature is fallen, our own minds are fallen, our hearts are fallen, nature is fallen, and we're oppressed. And so... I think things would be a whole lot clearer if uh, we weren't in this fallen condition. And that also clouds uh, some, some things up. One other thing that I think is important to add to this question is that the question of why the world is so ambiguous, um, that the stakes get raised considerably, in fact, infinitely higher for those who believe that if uh, a person doesn't know the truth, and they define what the truth is, then they're lost. They're going to hell. Um, and there's a lot of Christians who believe that. If you don't consciously know Jesus and know the Bible or whatever, whatever the criteria is, then you're lost. Now you'd really have a problem because uh, so much of what people believe is obviously determined by where they're born and who raises them and what their you know, propensity is, the psychological makeup and who happened to witness to them or whatever. There's a million variables that have nothing to do with character, nothing to do with your heart, uh, that are just rather accidental. And so to believe that a person is saved or lost based on that uh, is tantamount to saying that they're saved or lost based on an accident. But I would just encourage people, when Jesus says, seek and you shall find, he's, he's um, speaking an important truth there. And sometimes I find in my own life that the reason I don't see a truth is because part of me doesn't want to see it. Uh, life's like this Rorschach test, and, and it's like you, know, you, you see what you want to see. And um, so it's really important for us to um, purify our own motives and to really make sure that we're, we really want to know the truth and to find the truth, even if it's going to cost us something.